I'm Gavin Hoey and you're watching Adorama TV, brought to you by Adorama, the camera store that's got everything for us photographers. And in this video, I'm going to look at a problem that occurs when you want to use a wide angle lens and flash. Now I'm shooting on location here at the Gatwick Aviation Museum and the problem is, well, if I don't do anything about it, my flash and my light stand are going to ruin the shot that I want to take. But don't worry, I've got some solutions to fix this. So my job today is to take a great picture of Mike. Now, Mike used to be a captain of a Shackleton, and these beautiful planes, well, they've got one here at the Gatwick Aviation Museum. Now, to photograph him, I'm using my Olympus 7 to 14 millimeter wide angle lens. Now, if that sounds wide, in 35 mil full frame, that would be a 14 to 28 millimeter. So yeah, that really is wide, and I will be at that wide angle lens most of the time. As far as light goes, well, as well as the ever-changing sunlight that we've got today, I'm using my Flashpoint Streaklight 360. And that's firing through a Flashpoint Glow softbox. Trouble is, I want it that close, and that close gives me problems. So let me take a picture and show you what problems I'm having. Okay, Mike, here we go. So as you can see, it's a great environmental shot. That's what wide angle lenses do. They tell the story of the scene, but the light stand and the softbox kind of ruin things. So the first solution is really simple. Change the position that you're shooting at. You have to compromise somewhere in photography. So my compromise is obvious. If I go closer, I can get rid of the softbox. Let's do that. Okay, Mike, I'm gonna come in a little bit closer towards you. Here we go. And if you can just look at the underside of the softbox, that's perfect. Whilst that works really well, and it does make a great shot of Mike, the downside, well, it's not the shot that I wanted. And that's something you have to live with. Sometimes compromises, you don't always get what you want. And also with a wide angle lens, the closer I get to Mike, the more distorted and weird his face looks, which isn't really the look I want at all. So if I want to get the shot, what can I do? Well, let's try something different. So my next solution sounds obvious when you say it. If the light is in the way, move the light. But like everything, there's always going to be a payoff if you do that. Well, let's get the light because that's where it is at the moment. But if I move it around so it's more in line with my camera angle, it's not going to be in the way of the shot. Let's take a picture and see what the downside of that is. OK, Mike, here we go. Now, my first downside is I've lost a little bit of light. The, the flash is now a little bit further away. The second downside is I've lost the direction of light. Now, there, were, there was a reason that I had the light where it was. It was for the, the moody lighting it was giving me. And by getting the light more on camera axis, I lose some of that mood. Now, that might be a compromise you're more than happy to make to save yourself some trouble, in which case, this is a great solution. So my next solution for getting the lighting and the stand out of the way is to hide it. Now this one's a bit more niche because there's not always going to be an opportunity to hide your light and your light stand behind something. But even if you can just hide the actual light source, that's a really good thing because it will stop flare and that can often be the hardest thing to clone out. Sometimes in Photoshop you can just clone out a light stand. So what I've done this time is I put my light, tucked it right up behind and out of the way, and hopefully I shouldn't see all of it in the shot. But that depends on where I stand. So if I stand here and I take a picture of Mike, here we go. That's pretty good. But if I go wide, the wider I go, the more chance I'm going to see it. So let's come in here. Yeah. So from that angle, I can actually see the lighting stand. Now I can remove it in Photoshop, it's not the end of the world, but sometimes just moving yourself will save you a load of time in post-production. So let's just come around a little bit further, being very careful not to bang my head. And I need to look through the viewfinder as I find my, my spot. That's perfect. And Mike, can you look at the underside of the light for me? That's terrific. And one more. 
And as you can see in this shot, well, that light is totally out of the scene. No need for any post-production, just a case of careful positioning of the light. So my last setup is one that needs a bit of planning, but ultimately gives you the best quality, because what I'm going to do is take two pictures, one with the flash when it's in the frame of the shot, and then the second one where I move the flash out the way, and then we'll do a bit of Photoshop magic to bring the two together. Now, why have I got the flash so close? Well, there are two reasons. Reason number one, the closer you get the flash, the softer and more flattering the light becomes because it becomes bigger relative to the subject. The second reason is the closer you get your flash, the more powerful it becomes. And when you're shooting on location, with the sun out the way it is just at the moment, you need every ounce of power you can get. So closer is better. Okay, let's take a picture. So the first shot is gonna be the one with the flash in the scene. Are you ready, Mike? I'm ready. Okay. Now we can actually take a couple of pictures. Mike doesn't have to be in the second shot. He doesn't have to have the same pose. So Mike, have a little look at the bottom of the box there for me. That's fantastic. That's really good. You want to pop your hands in your pockets as well, just to mix it up a little bit. I bet you were told never to do that. Yeah. <laughs> too right, too. Very good advice. Okay. And if you want to look down the lens for me. Okay. What about putting them behind your back? Would that be more of a, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes, <laughs> more correct. And again, rather than looking at me, uh, look at the, uh, the bottom of that for me. That's terrific. That's great. Okay, so that's the pictures taken with the flash in. Now, here's the really important bit. At this point, touch nothing. Don't zoom the camera, don't move it. That's why it's on a tripod. Yes, you could do this handheld, but boy, is it more difficult. The only thing you're gonna move is the light. I'm gonna get the light out. And in fact, just to prove the point, we can even say to Mike, Mike, do you wanna step out as well? He doesn't have to be in the picture, although he could if he wants to be. And then I just take the same shot again. Now that is gonna be an empty frame and I'm gonna bring that in with the other picture to Photoshop to do some editing. And I'm gonna do that right now. Well, it's the next day and I'm back in my studio. I've gone through the images and I'm gonna put them together. Now, to be honest, the hardest bit, well, that's already happened. This bit, editing in Photoshop, very quick, very simple. Here's how it's done. I've got the image here that I want to use as my main image. This is the clean one or a plate image. And I want to combine it with this one here with Mike, but I wanna lose that softbox and the boom arm on the right corner. So to do that, I'm gonna come up to select and then all, edit, and copy. Go over to the other image, the empty one, and choose edit and paste. So that puts the two images on top of each other as separate layers, and you can see, well, there's a difference in the clouds, because there was a difference in the time when I took these two pictures, but other than that, everything else is the same other than the softbox being missing. However, is it the same? Let's just have a, a really close look, and we'll just uh, flick this on and off again, Yep, there's a little bit of movement. That's bouncing up and down. Why is there movement between these two images? What happened? Well, there's a couple of things that might have happened. It could be that pressing the shutter button on the camera moved the camera ever so slightly. That's quite probable. It could be that the image stabilization was switched on, except I'd switched that off because I was using a tripod. It could well be I just kicked the tripod. I've done that many, many times. In this case, I don't think it particularly matters. It's not a big movement, but sometimes it's critical. Let's have a look at how it can be fixed. So I'm gonna come back to my layers. I'm gonna hold the shift key and click on the, well, the layer that's not currently selected, which is the background for me. And then I'm gonna go back to edit, and this time in the middle, auto align layers. Now the projection I will leave on auto, that's the default setting, just click OK and let it do its thing and it'll look for the overlaps and it'll just make sure that these two images line up absolutely perfectly. That's excellent. Okay, so now I know there's no movement in the Shackleton, I can set about removing the softbox. And I do that by clicking on the layer that I want to remove the object from, the top layer, and then I'm going to come down to the new layer mask icon click on that and I get this white rectangle. Now, if I get a paintbrush and I make sure that my brush is black, if I paint black over the thing I want to remove, in this case, this rather big softbox, it magically disappears along with the boom arm. Now, why is that happening? Well, it's over here, the layer mask. 
that black area acts like an eraser and it cuts away anything that I don't want to see, like the softbox, and reveals the layer below where it's not in the shot. And I can go further because over here is a rather dark, well, that's the, uh, the, the shadow of the softbox. That wasn't in the second picture because I removed it from the shot. What about this line here? This line is actually not a crack in the Shackleton. That is a bit of the flash bouncing off the shiny surface. But again, I can paint over that and cut these areas out so you don't get to see them anymore. They're hidden away. You get to see the layer below, which is the clean image. Now you might be thinking, why not just so sort of clone this out, it wouldn't have been quicker and easier. Well, if you ever tried to clone sky, you'll know how difficult it is to get a perfect match on those blue skies. With a bit more tidying up, there it is, my final picture completed. Well, we got some fantastic pictures here and the wide angle lens really did play its part, but moreover, Mike was an absolute star. Now, Mike is actually a volunteer here at the Gatwick Aviation Museum. And if you get the chance to come along, Come and meet Mike, he will tell you all of the tales of what it was like to actually fly on one of these Shackleton aircraft from first-hand experience and believe me, it's well worth coming just for that. Bring your camera along as well, get some good pictures. Now, if you want to see more videos from myself and the other amazing presenters right here on Adorama TV, you know what you've got to do? You've got to be clicking on that subscribe button. I'm Gavin Hoey, thanks for watching.